Hello, to Buberlands. Woohoo! Let me show you something that you probably already know. What you're looking at is your computer or cell phone. No, what you're going to see is uh, how to check the, uh, the bore and your pistons and your rings and your underwear if you want. Grab your new compression ring. Cram it in there like that. Don't worry, they won't break. And you grab your clean piston with the rings off of it. And you use it to get the ring in there balanced and settled and lined up. Then, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a groove here between the ring, the ring where the ring goes together. Let me see if I can do something here. Whoop! Can you see that little groove right there? Hi, groove! Now, to check the bore and see if the rings is going to fit and seal good, you measure that little notch between the, the ring. And that gives you the clearance. Clearance, clearance. And you take one of these implements. This is what I used to... Well, anyway, this is a feeler gauge, believe it or not. And you can even read the, the numbers on it. I've got a bunch of them that uh, numbers come up of. And you put it in that groove. You put the biggest one you can get in that groove. They'll just barely fit. And you have to really push this one in. It's a little bit, it's a little bit less than this. But you can mess around and saw it in there. And it'll almost start. And this shows... Uh, 0 0.60 mm's or 0 0.024 thousandths. Those 24 thousandths. And from the book, the book! <laughs> Thanks to RW Weather, thank you again. The book says, here, I'll just take y'all. Let me get you back in the world. There you go. Okay. The book, the book says, anyway, the clearance is good as long as you don't have, the the maximum is 38 thousandths, and the minimum is 15 thousandths, and we're well within that, being at 26, a little bit less than 26, because I can't get it in there, and the 24 fits in there too good, I think. So, that's good. Hallelujah. Let me move y'all over here. I should just scoot the table. I'll scoot the table. There. Table scoot. Don't worry. This won't be a 30 minute one. Let's hope. Okay, if you're un uh, uh, of course I want to pull the crank. But if you're not wanting to pull the crank and you're working underneath the car fixing it underneath the car and you need to change the bearings out just do it kind of one at a time what you do to get the upper bearing out when the crank's still in there is you make you one of these little dudes out of a cotter key you flatten the head of it out and, and you cram it in there like that it's almost flush and then you rotate your crank with that in there and it pushes out the bearing. That way you can get the top bearing out of it. And if you made it just right, it should go all the way around, but it may not. And that's small enough, and the, the cotter key is soft enough that it won't gall your hardened crank. Then you just pull it out. You cram your other bearing in there and scooch it in there with a screwdriver or a rusty file and you're good to go. How's them apples for you?
Uh, let's see what I've been doing today. Let me get you out of this goofy stand. Hold still, I'll be gentle. Okay, now you're done. Away, away. Uh, I took all the... Well, you're really loving this close-up stuff. Uh, this, I took this to be an oil vein. So we cleaned all that stuff up, I pulled everything, and went in through yarn and forced air and clean stuff and uh, bore cleaners for a 22 rifle and cleaned all that oil stuff out and then re pre lubed it, pre primed it. I got everything, I got the oil pump tuck apart and put back together and uh, it's all lubed up and primed and checked on all this stuff and pushed, cleaned it up, primed it. I'll redo that too when I get to putting the goodies back in it. And the, the little pop-off valve for the pressure. Thing took it all apart and goofed it, goofed around with it. And so we should be ready to hone and moan here in a little bit. And uh, three days ago I worked on this some. It don't look like it, but I did. Had to use a chair because I couldn't walk my darn sacroliliacs out. I crawled to the truck this morning, and the good Lord said, Whoa, we'll let him walk a little bit. So by the time I rode the truck here, I'm up going. Hallelujah. Yeah, tell me the good Lord don't like mechanics and stuff. But anyway, the next thing to do is to wash these cylinders out and hone it and do the pistons. Oh, also while I was sitting down hurting yesterday, I took the the front, took the uh, one of these apart that's going on the car. It had obvious signs that of rust in the trunnion area and I had to cut it apart with my sawzall because the bolts wouldn't come out through the the, the uh, rubber bushings and stuff and this is I checked I was really scared because uh, Scott Best told me this oh several years ago that the trunnions in this part here strip out and it'll drop your car onto the pavement at a very embarrassing and could be potentially fatal time. But it was loose but it's still got good threads and I got a new trunnion coming for this and a new ball joint and bushings and all that other stuff for this side. New bearings. The bearings were cloudy. Had a cloud on them which I don't know if you can see that. See that dark spot? Uh, that's broke through. I'm thinking it's broke through the hardened goober stuff. So I got to get. I've got the inners coming. I got to find out where to get the outers. Uh, story, story, story. And that's about it. I got to beat. Oh, that gun! It's hard to bend down. Sorry. Get it this way. I got to beat these rod bolts, these rod bolts, these bolts out of here. There it is. And put some bushings in that too, and probably take it apart, redo all the other stuff, and see if the shock's any good on both of them. And uh, that'll be way along the way of not having to mess with it for years. And I think that's about all I can tell you right now. We're just piddling around till the world looks level. Then we'll go home. Now let me let me show you where the the brains of this outfit is. She neglected to uh, come out into the shop with me, and I don't blame her. She's in here, got water and all sorts of stuff. There she is. Hey. 
How you doing? You wanna go in? No? You wanna go in the shop? Really? Okay. I'll have her take her in the shop. In the shop. Okay. Hang on, hang on. This is the old pal Cutworm saying I love you. And y'all have fun. Take care of your backs, because I didn't. Okay? Bye-bye.